All right, everybody, welcome to, I think this is, yeah, the second ever episode of nice. the Crypto and Mental Health Podcast. Uh, we have with us today's special guests, um, Eric and Stephen, brothers from Wilson Mining. And we have all of their fans uh, commenting in the comment section of the YouTube videos. Thousands of people watching us right now, right? <laughs> sure. Oh, got the whole, the whole squad. Come on, plus. Awesome. <laughs> is, is your is your sister watching, Stephen? Your twin sister? <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> Come on. Come on, Jennifer. Tune in. We texted her. She didn't uh, she didn't respond. <laughs> yeah. A miscellaneous Facebook user said millions. <laughs> and uh, Crypto Pope says good afternoon. You guys know Crypto Pope? I think yeah, I've seen him I've seen him on the Twitter, I believe. Yeah, I awesome. recognize him. Um, yep. On the Twitters, mm -hmm. Twitters. Yep. well, great. So, yeah, what what are we what are we talking about here today, guys? You know, I, you've I think more more recent entrance into the uh, immersion and and hosting and and all all that stuff. Yeah, so why don't you just tell us a little bit about what you guys do and and who you are and what your background is? So we um, obviously I'm Eric. Um, we we started. Well, I started my Bitcoin journey. And I think it was 2018, early 2018, my neighbor texted me one more or one day and just said, hey, have you heard about this Bitcoin thing? I've been buying it. And so then I started asking him more questions about it. And then I started buying it. And then I just kept buying it, kept buying it, kept buying it. And then one day, Stephen messages me and asks me if I would like to uh, start mining Bitcoin. <laughs> and that was, um, that was what, early 2021? Yeah, yeah, early yeah. 2021. Yeah, early 2021. So we um, we bought an S19 Pro, threw it in our mom's basement, and just started hashing away. Our mom was very nice about it. <laughs> it was quite loud. Shout out to her. Yeah, she was, shout uh, out to her. Did Did you guys supportive. figure out how to how to down clock that and and maybe like make it a little bit less loud for her? Uh, or what? Oh no, we overclocked. No mercy. No mercy. <laughs> oh, geez, you guys. Holy. So that obviously necessitated it, it. Probably encouraged you guys to take the next step. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, is this your mom? Shout out to mom. That's the next <laughs> Facebook user we have here. <laughs> yeah, so so Stephen, you know what what really precipitated that? If that's the right word to use. Um, you know that move from mom's yeah. garage, mom's basement to to now what you guys are doing. Yeah, so I mean, basically what happened was, um, you know, we owned a bunch of our family's been in the like agriculture, corn and, and soybean business for a very long time. We're technically fifth generation farmers. Um, and we knew that there was cheap power down in Iowa. Um, we're surrounded by wind turbines. Um, and the idea was, you know, we have all this land we had some buildings down there that we could put the miners in. Um, you know, let's buy a bunch of our miners, go down there, get the cheap energy. Um, and you know, we didn't have to lease the land, you know, we, it, we didn't have to buy it from anybody. You know, there was a lot of things that were like really hard to get um kind of like already in place for us and um so yeah that was kind of the idea and we went down to iowa and basically the first facility that we built was fully immersion which is kind of unique most people mm -hmm. go air cooling and then they try to go immersion and we just kind of went straight to immersion um if you if, you know if you've seen any of our youtube videos that first facility did not work out and we you know we made the big giant mistake of not getting our power um, locked in and, and understanding like what our rate was going to be. And that was, you know, a ton of people, I've talked to a ton of people who've made like this very, very similar mistake. Um, so, you know, then we had to move because the, the power company that we were with was not going to negotiate with us at all. So luckily for us, you know, we had another, other land that we could go to, um, with a local co-op down there. And they were very, very good to us. They gave us a, a fantastic rate uh, straight out the get-go. They were super excited uh, to work with us. And um, so, yeah, then we had to move everything. And it was, uh, you know, it was a timely and costly mistake. But ultimately, it was, you know, definitely the, the correct direction for us yeah. to go to um, long-term, you know, and, and everything like that. So that's kind of how we ended up uh, where we're at with, with the hosting so we've got a um, 
a Facebook sure. watcher today. He's asking us what power company. Um, yeah. Our, our, we're on a rural co-op. They buy from a, a company called Corn Belt who buys from Basin Electric. Oh, that, that's who, you, who you're with now or, or previously? That's who we're with now. Yeah. Before, we were with Alliant Energy. Ooh, you know, Alliant Energy. Oh, yeah. Alliant. You guys are watching this on them. You know, we do not like those guys. They're <laughs> extremely unfriendly to us. You know, yeah. if you're, you know, if you're, you know, looking at mining Bitcoin and you're on any of their lines, you know, it's, you're going to have a tough time with them. You know, I would, I would recommend just probably planning on moving. Yeah versus trying to work with them. And that's the case with, you know, power companies, right? Some of them get it, some of them don't. That just is what it is. Mm -hmm. Well, so, okay, so you guys were a primary customer or a secondary customer, meaning like you, you guys didn't own the transformers yourselves? Um, correct. For the, the first location, yeah, because we were, it set up the uh, the site we were on was a, it was a grain bin site, again, owned by our mom, who <laughs> lets us do whatever. And so they already had 600 amp service. They had a 100, 100 kVA transformer already there. It was single phase 12240. So, but it was for the corn rind system, which used it used a lot of power, but it only used that in like the months of October and November. But you know, the rest of the the rest of the 10 months, it was it wasn't using any power. And so we're like, well, let's just you know bring the power over to the shed. And, you know, get you know it, it wasn't that expensive, so we didn't have any capex really up front, which was pretty convenient. But Ultimately, the rate was not. It was like eighteen yeah. cents all in. It was really bad. And now, now where you're at, at the other place. Um, so, uh, do you guys own your own transformers? Yeah, yeah. We take it at primary voltage. I think it's twelve four seventy Y, and then yeah, we bring it down to four fifteen two forty. But yeah, we we had to purchase that. Yeah, we got some other people that are yeah. a little bit upset about <laughs> Alliant as well. Oh no, we got a reputation. <laughs> How do you spell Alliant? Is it Flyant? <laughs> I, think, yeah. I think you meant to say a, a, a bad uh, word. Oh. Oh, okay. yeah. 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 So, I mean, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I have to ask because this is the, the crypto and mental health podcast. You know, how, how did that make you feel? You know, like crypto winter is bad enough, but I mean, yeah, it was, yeah, um, I mean, it was, it was tough. I mean, we were basically, you know, we basically gave ourselves 24 hours to kind of sulk, um, and but I mean, we had purchased, you know, at that point, we had purchased 24 miners. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's like that was not a, a small amount of money to us. And it was like, look, we got to figure out how to make this work. Like we can't, you know, we can't sit on these. We bought XPs, you know, and we bought some, J, you know, a bunch of J pros. And it was like, look, we got to figure out where to put these things. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, we're not just going to be able to sit on them. And I mean, it didn't help that, you know, basically by the time the whole time that we're, you know, moving over, uh, the whole FTX situation yep. is happening and, you know, the economics of mining are the worst they've ever been, um, in history. And I mean, I guess like, you know, the advice you would give is like, you know, basically having a partner, right. So anytime that I was feeling, you know, unsure, unconfident, or, just down about things, you know, at least I had Eric there to kind of back me and, you know, likewise when yeah. Eric feeling stressed about things like, you know, you know, this is tough. We're running into issues here, there, you know, it's just like having somebody that, you know, you're not just like by yourself mm -hmm. makes a huge difference. Oh, for sure. Know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, that would be like, you know, the, the, the super helpful advice is like, dude, if you're going to do this, like get someone to help, like that you're going to partner with that, mm -hmm. that can help you because it's not easy. And, uh, you're going to want someone to, uh, you know, understand like how you're, how you're feeling in, in the time being, and, and hopefully like get you out of like the, the negative feelings, uh, that happen. <laughs> yeah. The funk basically. Right. Yeah, Cause I mean, it, it is, it's, it's up and down in this industry that this industry isn't for the faint of heart, you know, I, I, I've known people that have come and gone in this industry and, um, yeah, you know, they, they, they couldn't take it. Um, mm -hmm. I couldn't take it for, I don't know, probably a good half year. Mm -hmm. I was literally, my brain was mush, mm -hmm. uh, didn't mm -hmm. want to live, didn't want to work, didn't, didn't want to, you know, play with my daughter mm -hmm. didn't want to, didn't want to do anything. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I was, cause I was, I was just so depressed because, I put so much of my, 
you know, my self worth on what I do as a business person, and I, I want to be successful, right? Yeah. And so it, 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 things like Bitcoin going from three k up to you know sixty k and then back down again, that doesn't help. <laughs> <laughs> it's wild. Yeah, it's uh, you really got to uh, you got to have good people in your mm -hmm. corner, you know, and whether that's like you know like you know friends and family in your you know in your you know in real life you know, aspect or even just like, you know, on the internet with Twitter mm -hmm. and Telegram, like you can't, you can't do this alone, man. It's just, you're not, yeah. you're going to have a tough time and it's, it's going to take a lot of the enjoyment out of it. You've got to have kind of people behind you mm -hmm. to, to help you in this industry. Cause, cause it's tough. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, so a uh, question for Eric, just, uh, I'm just picking from my random list here of like a hundred questions. Um, What's an insult that, that you've received that, that you're proud of? That I'm proud of? Yeah. Oof. Um, I think there's a few of them. One is that I guess, not that I'm crass maybe, but that I, I, I always kind of speak what I, what's on my mind. There, like, there isn't much of a filter. Like, if I don't like something that you did, I'll, you know, I just tell you straight to your face. And I, I mean, I kind of wear that with pride because, you know, there isn't, there isn't a second side of me. And, you know, I, I say what I feel and, you know, yeah. I, I, I mean what I say, you know, sometimes I say things that are wrong, but I mean, you know, if I, you know, it, it is what it is, but that's how I felt at the time. So I, yeah, you know, I, I, I wear that with pride. Well, I mean, this, this industry is, I mean, it's full of a lot of bullshitters, mm -hmm. a, a lot of liars. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. it, it's the wild west, you know, and <laughs> I think it is being, yes. just being blatant and being honest like that. Uh, it, yeah, it definitely comes off as crass sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm fairly crass myself, <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, I just, there's just no other way. Um, yeah, you, you got to know who you're dealing with in this, in this industry. Mm -hmm. you know? Um, and why not just, just say it as it is. All right? Exactly. hundred percent. Yeah, goes a long way. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So a uh, question for Steven. Um, so are, are you more of an extrovert or introvert? Um, I, I would say I'm more extroverted, I guess, compared to Eric. Um, yeah, I would consider myself pretty introverted. Like if I'm like, you know, in a big group, like, you know, I will call it like a party. It's like, you know, I need like, you know, call it 24 or 48 hours to kind of like regroup my energy. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I would say I could be pretty extroverted at times when, when needed. Um, mm -hmm. But I do, you know, I do quite like my, my alone time as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's, that's interesting. Yeah, I, I know for myself, my, well, my wife is complete opposite of me. Like she, when she sees people, she's with people, she gets energized. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i'm like yeah if i have to talk to more than like one person at a time or if i'm in a big group i i get drained and it takes me mm -hmm. like literally 24 hours i need to myself just to yeah. sit in the basement you know not <laughs> not talk to anybody <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly so i like the miners they don't talk back they just, they just do what they're told. <laughs> well yeah sometimes yeah sometimes. yeah yeah you're right sometimes. That, that's yeah, why yeah. i got i got into the uh the minor repair business yeah. Um, because they, they do talk back actually. <laughs> I suppose that's true. Yeah. And you can listen to them. They, they have these nice ASIC testers. They got the, the Stasic tester, the Pico BT, mm -hmm. the, the ASIC Ninja tester, and, and, uh, you know, some of the other ones out there mm -hmm. where, uh, it, it, it'll, it'll give you advice kind of, kind of like, you know, like listening to a good podcast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right on, right on. Yeah. Um, so yeah, let's, let's ask you one more question. Um, Eric, uh, and, and then we'll go to a little short commercial break and we'll, I'll shill some stuff, but uh, Eric, it was, so what's one piece of advice that you'd give to somebody uh, just starting out in Bitcoin or, or, or Bitcoin mining? That would be, you just, I think I, 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 I listened to a podcast recently. It had Rob from uh, upstream in it. He just said, I, I really like this advice. He just said, you just have to start. It's yeah. the same thing. You just have to start, you know, get in the telegram, start asking questions, start watching videos, but you just have to start somewhere. Everyone started with not knowing anything. We were no different. 
I joined one of your telegrams and I just started listening and asking questions and viewing what was going on. And then you just get, you just get exposure to, you know, what, what's going, what's happening. And then, you know, of course, just like anything you over time, you just start to learn but from other people's mistakes, but it's just so important just to, just to start doing something about it. Absolutely. You know, I, I agree. That's, I mean, that's kind of what I am. I'm, I'm a self-starter and I, I'm more of a, a kinesthetic learner. Mm -hmm. I just, I just learn by trial and error. You know, I, I never went to school. Mm -hmm. Um, my, my brother never went to school. We're, we're very <laughs> entrepreneurial. Um, and you know, so I, yeah, my, my brother's actually a farmer, uh, not the nice. Bitcoin farmer kind. He's, he's, he's the <laughs> vegetable farmer kind, yeah, yeah. but yeah, you know, just, just kind of like just doing it. And, and like mm -hmm. you guys said, I, you had that miner up and running in your mom's mm -hmm. basement mm -hmm. that probably gave you a lot of motivation to like, mm -hmm. be like, okay, first of all, we need more of these. Yep. Right. <laughs> Second of all, we can't do this at residential power rates and third yeah, of all, exactly. we, we can't do this. Uh, yeah. We, we need to do it in a place where we can make a little bit of noise and, and or, or, <laughs> or heat. Right. Yeah. So you just, you just do it. Right. And, yeah, and yeah. so I, I, I said, um, basically, yeah, the, the biggest motivation to building out your farm is just by putting up as many miners as you can, wherever you can. And mm -hmm. you, you will very quickly find a way to find, you know, more power or cheaper mm -hmm. power or a better way to do it by, do, by yeah. just doing it. Right. Yeah. Uh, so we have a question from a Facebook user. He says, how many units do you guys uh, currently have running? Um, I think we are at, 110 we still have some other customer miners that haven't arrived yet but right now we have 110 hash and we were curtailed this morning but i literally turned them on like 20 minutes ago <laughs> I turned them yeah on. no i i saw that we, we were just about to go live and you're like oh hold on i just i just got to notice that the power rates back down to normal <laughs> let, let me go turn them back on quick <laughs> hopefully you don't have to go turn them back off no, how many times in, in like in one day or in one week would you have to turn them off because of curtailment um it's it's completely dependent on the weather. So how it works is like we have a um, there's like a monthly peak. So the highest energy usage for that day for the month is when we have to curtail. But the rest of the days we shouldn't have to curtail. But it's you know obviously there's you know if you if you have a high usage on you know for instance March second we still have the rest of the month to have a higher usage day, and then you would have to curtail again. But it's completely dependent on the weather. Okay. So the, the really is, is about the weather. Yeah, exactly. Right. Okay. Well, that's, that's interesting. Um, yeah. So that's how you get the cheap rates though. Right. Yep. It is. Yeah. That's the only way to do it. Unless you put up your own generation facility, which it's not very easy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, we have another Facebook user saying you should be incredibly happy within a few years. You went from mom's basement to 110 units. Congrats. <laughs> thank you very awesome. much yeah yeah, it was... yeah and you know obviously you made some mistakes in in the in the process but i mean who mm -hmm. who doesn't right <laughs> i've met any, I, you know i haven't met anybody who's uh done everything perfectly yet so <laughs> yeah. yeah um well we're gonna just take a, a quick break here to talk about some of our sponsors and uh who are those sponsors well their various ventures that I'm working on here. Uh, so this first one here is the Dominican Republic Bitcoin meetup. And let me just go to that page here. So in December, between Christmas and New Year's, in the Dominican Republic, we're doing a conference. Uh, there's going to be some influencers, influencers there uh, from the Dominican Republic, but also from around the world. So it's going to be a bunch of Bitcoiners and Bitcoin miners showing up there. Uh, I'm actually going to send a couple pallets of uh, old S9s there to uh, to give away and to sell to people. So if you're interested in that, uh, definitely snag a ticket. They're only uh, under 100 bucks right now. And uh, you can come a day early, stay a day late and get an all inclusive, uh, you know, stay at a, a, on, on the beach um, at the same time. Um, another thing we got going on in April 26th has come up pretty quick here. We got Scott's Virtual Mining Conference. So it's a, a 3D virtual world. Uh, we've done this before where you can have a little character you can put on your, your Oculus if you want and uh, and just run around and have a bunch of fun. But basically what we're doing there uh, on the Wednesday evening, we're gonna have a little party, just have some fun networking, get to know each other. 
uh, maybe do like a little scavenger hunt in, in the, the virtual world. We're also going to have some exhibitors here um, with booths where you can go in, watch their videos, ask live questions uh, from some of the, the sponsors. Uh, we've got some exciting sponsors to, to share coming up. Uh, and then on, on the second day, yeah, so we have the expo hall and a virtual conference where we're going to have um, some speakers talking about some great topics. Uh, and then also April 24th in Wisconsin, we have an advanced level two minor repair training. Uh, so you can go to two dot tools slash advanced. And that is if you already have a Bitmain uh, certification or if you've already come to our level one training, uh, you can brush up on your skills and learn some some more advanced things. Uh, so on, on the agenda there, you know, we're, we're going to teach you how to use a hot plate for reworking hash ports, uh, how, how to use um, an oscilloscope. And, and they're really getting into some nitty gritty, uh, very detailed ways on how to fix PCBs um, and, and doing traces. Uh, so that's some really great stuff. So if you have broken miners uh, or if you maybe even want to start your own repair shop, uh, these are definitely some recommended um, events uh, that you can come to. At the same time, that exact same week, on, on uh, the week of April 24th to 28th, we're going to have a, a level one going on at the same time. So, so yeah, um, that's a little bit about what we're doing. Let's get back to this uh, regularly planned uh, event here. Okay, so Eric, Steve, thanks for putting up with that little promo there. I love it. Um, yeah. Looks fun. And um, let's see if we have some more comments from the, the peanut gallery here. Okay. We got Crypto Pope <clears throat> asks, uh, does that mean you shut down the entire container? So he's talking about the the, the curta curtailment Curtailer. here. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, why don't you tell us a little bit more about that? So when we curtail, so it, it kind of depends on how your, your setup is. So we don't have smart PDU. So we have to do or we do a very low tech solution. So what I actually do is I go into the router and I just block the internet for all the miners. So it just kind of puts them into sleep mode. They don't consume as much, but the container's still running. The fans are still going, but I mean, I can turn them off. I was going to go down there and turn them off for the winter because, you know, I don't need to have them running anyway and the miners would get too cold. But no, so the whole container is not off. It just, I just block the internet to the miners. Everything is still powered. And then, you know, I just yeah. unblock the internet and the miners, you know, come back online and we're back up and hashing no problem. How do you, how do you, feel the differences between doing that and versus um maybe doing a bulk uh sleep you know putting them in in sleep mode D does is there any difference would you say or have you tried that yet i have not tried it so we we just got up and running a few days ago so i haven't set up foreman or i, I was i was trying to do try lincoin agent um but no we we haven't got them set up yet but i it would definitely be a lot easier to do that because now I have to go on the route. I have to click, you know, 110 different, you know, little selection boxes that yeah. block the internet. And, but so it's a lot easier to use. So the, the, what the, about, um, what about the option of just like literally unplugging your, your router? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that works. But I have to, I'd have to drive two hours down there to do it. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the. That's well, the, you maybe you could you could buy one of those little um, you know 110 volt uh, Wi-Fi switches, right? And just just put that on your your modem or your router. Yeah, but but then if I unplug the router, then I can't I can't turn it back on. Yeah, yeah. that's the problem. But I mean, everything should restart automatically when once they sense the internet again, right? Well, yeah, but I can't turn the router back on because yeah, because it doesn't have Wi-Fi. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Little oh, yeah. tips, tips and, and tricks here. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Crypto Pope was saying uh, yeah, maybe a smart switch. So I've I've got um, these 240 volt mm -hmm. smart switches myself. Um, you know, it, it can maybe power 30 amps at a time on mm -hmm. 240 volt. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, just just with an app on my phone, I, I can just say, okay, turn turn that PDU off, turn that PDU on. Yeah. So you don't actually need a, a, a full out smart pdu that way you know that mm -hmm. you can just use maybe like a different um cheaper appliance instead of spending like 900 bucks or you know 1500 bucks on smart yeah. pdu you can just right. do like a you know, couple hundred dollar uh, solution but yeah it, it sounds like the most ideal thing for you guys right now is is just going and press pressing the button on yeah. the thing or or like you said get get foreman working and just put them in sleep yep. mode right yeah, yeah, it would be a lot easier that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah.
I just, you know, I, I, I worked in the automotive industry for seven years. And so I always found it, you know, just it's, it's never, you know, try not to overcomplicate things. If you got some that works and it works well, you know, just, just stick with it and just, you know, as, as unsexy as it might be to click a hundred times on a router, you know, it, it works perfectly every time. It's cheap. Yeah. It's <laughs> it's cheap. Not, yeah. So yeah. Uh, earlier you guys were saying, you know, uh, I mean, there, there's been other hosting companies that have tried to do this, you know, make a, a, a retail play. It sounds like uh, you guys have a few smaller customers yourself, right? Not, not just like one massive customer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, there's there's been a lot of ups and downs in this industry, and and uh, you know some other hosting companies who have specifically targeted retail like that. Uh, it's mm -hmm. not not gone well for them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Because you know typically customers like that are you know, people who have in, uh, almost invested everything they had buying S nineteens at ten thousand mm -hmm. um, dollars a yeah. pop. And, right. and this is like almost their life savings sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, they're literally watching their pool every single day. They have alerts, you know, SMS, mm -hmm. emails, every time a miner goes down, mm -hmm. you know, like they're like, they're on it. So how, mm -hmm. how do you, how do you deal with that? Does, does that suck? Or are you guys pretty good at handling that so far? I mean, it's really just about like having like the right expectation mm -hmm. with people, um, you know, and, and, Kind of the thing is like, you know, you see like a lot of these hosting companies that have like gotten in themselves in trouble and like, you know, have gotten a ton of like bad negative reviews and stuff online. And, you know, basically it all boils down to them basically lying about like what's going on with their situation. Like, you know, just like, you know, a super like human principle, like people are super understanding when you tell them the truth about what's going on, yep. you know, and they're not understanding when you lie to them and they find out about it. Like it's yeah, like, e even if you have a an ironclad contract that that puts them in the best position, like yeah, they they could execute on that and say, hey, you messed up, you know, you owe me X amount of dollars or a yeah. refund or whatever. But right, sometimes they won't even ask for that if if you just are forthright and you're mm -hmm. communicative and you stay in touch and yeah, instead yeah, of I mean, over, over promising and under delivering, you just mm -hmm. yeah, be be it's, transparent, right? <laughs> it's amazing what you know if you just tell people what's going on, like you know. Like, you know, one of the, the problems that we ran into with one of our delays was, uh, you know, we had to pass an inspection and we didn't pass our first time, you know, and, and that was, you know, we very easily could have, you know, ventured farther away from the truth of like what actually happened, but we didn't. Mm -hmm. And um, because we didn't, we just, you know, told the truth right away, like people were understanding mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, everybody stayed with us. And then sure enough, we passed the second time, boom, we're up and running. Everyone's happy. No one even is going to remember that we, you know, didn't yeah. make the first inspection. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And so it's, it's all about just, you know, doing business the correct way. Like mm -hmm. it's not terribly difficult or anything like that. <laughs> like it, just do things yeah, the right no, way. Like it's not that hard. When, when people are, are trying to, you know, their, their pride gets the best of them and they want to put on a good show. They want to make it look like they have it all together. Mm -hmm. But I, I think I, I really prefer doing it the opposite, just like, Mm -hmm. being truthful and saying hey you know shit happens i'm yeah. sorry it sucks uh we didn't meet our goal whatever you know yeah there, think, there's uh, all sorts of different things you can say i think that kind of we've taken the same exact approach and i think that kind of has added to a, like a lot of the charm of why people like us where it's like you know we send people you know here's our warehouse and it's, you know, it's our mom's basement. Like, you know, and the joke is hilarious. Like there's not this big professional, you know, <laughs> warehouse, like, you know, it's, it, it is like, this is, you know, it's our mom's basement. Like, you know, and people appreciate just like, you know, basically, you know, this is who we are and this is what we can do. And, you know, we're not going to pretend to be like something that we're not basically. Yeah. Um, and you'd be surprised how, like how far that goes with people. Mm -hmm. We got, we got maybe like a little subtle, um, um shilling here but I, I don't know hash branch is not a, they're not a hosting company but yeah the hash branch uh i've seen them pop up recently uh yeah. they, they yeah, are yeah. a, a with... place where hosting companies them specifically not not brokers but you have to actually yeah. be a, a real legit mm -hmm. yeah. uh, hosting company you yeah, go yeah. and put your services on there for sure but yeah he, he's asking so since you guys are full you know, where to go? Would you recommend? <laughs> would you just say just, just just don't buy miners. Just don't be stupid. Just <laughs> I would. Uh, I mean, I would say that don't. You know, go before you buy a miner. Make sure you get like a hosting provider first, mm -hmm. basically. 
um, you know, like hosting is super tight right now. Um, and, and, you know, we've got a, t you know, a huge list of people that want to host with us that we can't, that we can't take because we're full. Um, you know, if you can check out like simple mining is in Iowa, they're like, you know, an hour ish away from us. Um, you know, we've done like, we've sent some repairs their way and, and, and some, some customers their way too. And, and they're super good operators, Adam and Nick over there. You can check those guys out. Um, like big cap. We've talked to Jimmy. Mm -hmm. um they're up in washington he's a super good dude you could check them out too i don't know kind of what their availability is like but like what i would say is like you know make sure that you've got a spot before you buy a miner because most people are buying miners than looking for spots and it's way easier to get miners than it is hosting slots right now yeah 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 i mean yeah my miners are pretty cheap right now yeah uh, you know maybe two months ago it was like rock bottom i right. don't know if we're gonna get to that rock bottom again um, yeah. but, but yeah, um, now is a good time to buy miners, even if you just have to sit on them. But like you yeah. said, yeah, it's, it is a good idea to try to secure some hosting first, or may, maybe you just try to get them up and running in your, your mom's basement and, and do... you'll quickly get motivated to <laughs> find, yeah. find another solution. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, we're, we're coming close to the end of the show here. Um, what's, what's one question that, that you guys wanted me to ask that I haven't asked you guys yet? Hmm. Um, yeah, I guess like, uh, kind of like our like really big belief overall is kind of like this whole idea of like playing to your advantage. Mm -hmm. Um, so basically like kind of like my, like the thesis behind that is like the reason that we decided to get into Bitcoin mining in the first place was because, you know, we already had land that was on cheap power and like that yeah. was, you know, a big advantage to us. Right. And you can apply that concept like even further where it's like, you know, you see tons of people arguing about like, Oh, like which energy source is best and like so on and so forth. And it's like, the real question is like what energy source is best in your area. Right. Like the sun doesn't shine in Iowa, but the wind blows all day, you know, or like if you're in Texas, it's like, you know, you guys have tons of, of, uh, natural gas. that's cheap down there. Like that's, that's your advantage. Like for, so, or if you're up in like, you know, Washington, you've got hydropower and like, that's the advantage. And basically like figuring out like what, what advantages do I have in my very specific in, you know, case, so to speak, and and playing towards that because you know this if you haven't figured out already like this is an extremely competitive environment of, of bitcoin mining and you need to come in with some way to um have an advantage over everyone else and if you don't you know you're gonna get swallowed up by the, by by the rest right yeah um Absolutely. so it's just like super important to be thinking about and not trying to like be somebody else or not trying to like execute somebody else's plan basically and just understanding like, okay, where are the advantages that I have for my situation? How do I make that work? And if you don't have any, then you probably shouldn't be trying to play in this, in this space because again, it's, it's competitive. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, well, question, one last question uh, for Eric. What, what do you think the Bitcoin mining industry is going to look like in 20, 25 years from now? Ooh, so we, we have, uh, a, a big plan on what we're going to look like. So <laughs> I can only assume that others are thinking something similar. So what I think or what we think is that Bitcoin miners are eventually going to have to start producing their own power. And so like Steven said, our advantage is wind power. So we want to throw up our own wind turbines, but we do think that, you know, at, to stay competitive, you're going to have to generate your own power because, I mean, other people are going to start doing it. And the second other people start doing it, then you get priced out because, again, you know, they own the power generation. They don't have to pay for a transmission cost. Someone else doesn't have to, you know, get their cut. It's like you, you own it all. And so we think it's going to be a bunch of miners that are vertically integrated with their own power. With their own, and they, they don't have to curtail. They can control it. But it's so we, we think that's where it's going to end up being like. Yeah, for sure um okay okay one one more question <laughs> uh steven i gotta ask this question i think i'm gonna try to ask this question every every week um but if somebody gave you 500 bitcoin tomorrow what would you spend it on 
500 Bitcoin tomorrow, what would I spend it on? It's a lot. I would, I would, you know, probably take a small, I would probably take a portion of it and just hodl cold storage it. Um, but then, yeah, I would, I would spend the rest of it on just like energy infrastructure. Um, <laughs> and kind of like, that's been like, in our opinion, the hardest, most valuable part of kind of the whole mining play. Like it's super easy to get ASICs right now. Um, so I would spend, you know, transformers, um, containers, uh, basically all, all of that, the infrastructure that goes into it. Um, that's kind of where I would, I would put that money and then I would mine a bunch of Bitcoins over, you know, the next 10, 15, 20 years and see you guys and just keep, and just keep on making more. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Exactly. And, awesome. and grow the business, right? Yeah. Well, Hey guys, uh, we're at the end. Uh, really appreciate your time, you know, and I'd love to maybe have you guys on again in, uh, maybe even later this year to see the progress. Maybe they'll have a second yeah. container, third container, you know, 10 containers. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was awesome having you. Thank um, you for inviting us. Thank this you. was awesome. All right. Appreciate Take it. care.